What do I vlog with? I get that question more times than I would think I would get it, but I'm gonna answer it, well, I'm gonna answer it twice because some of this stuff is getting tossed because it's ineffective and doesn't work, and I'm upgrading it when I get to Austin, and some of it I would never part with because it's the longest relationship I've ever been in is with some of this gear. I have my camera bag. Let's start with that. I'll go through what I vlog with and then what I still uh, shoot stills with. And let me say this first. If you ask anyone who's done any level of professional video or photography what their favorite gear is or what the best gear is, oh God, it, it, I don't know what it is about professional or semi-professional or want to be professional people and giving advice on gear but they will canon people think that canons are the only things that was ever made S sony's those people are just adamant about sony i mean there's so many different brands and ultimately most photographers try a couple different kinds and then decide which is their favorite. That's expensive to do. You may not be able to do that, but you know, your other option is to look at a photographer's work and if you like the way their photos are coming out, you know, know that some of that is their talent plus editing, but ask them because I, certain cameras just bode well for different types of photography, portrait, architecture, landscape. I am a architecture and landscape photographer. Uh, you have to pay me more money than is reasonable to take your picture of your face. I'm just not good at taking pictures of people. Um, no building has ever not shown up on time and then tried to give their opinion about how a photo looks. So I prefer buildings. Um, with that said, so you're just, you can Google best camera 2019 and you're still going to get a very slanted view of what will ultimately work for you. See if you can borrow some of your friend's gear. <clears throat> Go to Best Buy and just take pictures around the room if you can. Um, but it's, it's a really personal and picky thing with photographers, the gear they use. So what I recommend may not be best for you. I'm just going to tell you, if you like my photos and like my videos, this is what I'm using and why. And part of the why is budget. You can spend all kinds of money on lenses, camera gear. That's probably the biggest rookie mistake I see photographers make, is that they think that if they have all the gear possible, that they will take good photos. Well, you can have every lens ever made. And if you're a shit photographer, you're still gonna have shit photos. I mean, you have to know what that gear was designed to do and then how to do it, and then combine that with some degree of talent and you get beautiful photos. Um, but it's every, I get such a kick around New Year's when I see people in Sam's Club, you know, they all got for Christmas or for New Year's, they get the like um, Canon Rebel kit and they're taking all, and they're all changing out the lenses for all different things and they don't know why they're changing the lenses or why they have that camera and then the biggest thing where you're like oh my gosh why did you spend all that money is to leave it on the easy button which is just the automatic focus automatic aperture automatic ISO blah 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 if you bought something that is this expensive and then you put it on the dummy setting which is the little green one and are letting the camera do everything for you you're not using that gear to the best of its ability so like what's the point okay i mean i do use that dummy button on occasion but i use it when i don't have nearly enough time or i'm gonna lose the shot unless i just put it on automatic otherwise if you're gonna spend the money, you need to learn the world of M, which is manual. All right, I'll start with this. This is a Sony a6000. It has since been upgraded to other models. Um, it's called an SLR, and what makes it so small as compared to a DSLR, which is huge. I mean, that's when like you see somebody in the big body and like there's all their weight holding it up. Uh, is that it doesn't have the mirror in it so and i won't go into the whole explanation as to why that is but i really like this because especially if i get to go abroad i don't like having that honking thing on me i mean i am a small person so holding a huge camera I think sometimes people buy those huge cameras because it makes them feel like a badass. You know, with those like ridiculous safari lenses. Unless you are trying to photograph the blackhead on a warthog's ass across the safari, chances are you don't actually need that. It just looks cool. Okay? 
It's small. Uh, it has the fastest um, automatic focus, I think, on the market still to date. Um, but really, I like it because it's tiny, it's compact, it's easy to travel with, it's not this ominous thing. The downside is, well, there's only a couple lenses that fit the Sony Alpha series, but I don't think that matters because you don't need all those lenses. You will quickly find that you fall in love with two, maybe three, and that's it. I, since I photograph buildings in large spaces, I use a wide angle lens almost all the time. Occasionally, I will use a zoom lens, and then sometimes, I will use a portrait lens. And a portrait lens is how you get that really blurry background. Um, and I won't go into the dynamics of all this, but beyond that, you really don't need a whole lot more than that. I think the body cost me about 600 to 700, and then the lenses are a couple hundred each. Um, you know, the best thing you can do is get the kit lens and maybe one more and learn the piss out of them. Learn everything they do, see what you can do, and then once you realize what you actually like photographing, then go out and get lenses that will support that mission. I didn't get the wide angle lens, I think for two years. And finally I was like, I can't get the whole building in the shot. Well, that's because I didn't have the right gear. Um, so they've, again, they've, since they've upgraded this, downside to this is that there is no audio input, which sucks for me because I've shot my documentaries on these cameras and I have to use something else to record audios for interviews. But if you want a small body, small body, you can't have all the bells and whistles. All the bells and whistles okay there's there's just trade-offs to everything I love this camera we've been together for several years I shoot in raw mode which I can explain in separately and then I edit on Lightroom and Lightroom you can rent for ten dollars a month uh, it gives you the interface for a computer and it also gives you an app and I can send oh that was another thing I love about this camera I can send a photo that I just took to my cell phone and then edit it on Lightroom and post it. So when I'm traveling, because I always travel alone because I want to enjoy my trip, um, you know, I can share photos like this without having to go back to the van or go back to hotel or wherever I'm staying to edit and upload. So I love that feature. That has been a lot of fun and it was helpful in news if I shot video of a breaking news event and then I could just send the photos right away. Um, this does record video. I shot, the, again, I shot my documentaries on it, but um, I don't use it to vlog. Here's why. There are lots and lots of vlog cameras, but they are heavy as all get out, and I have small gym teacher arms. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Yeah, girl. Um, anyway, so I don't want to hold this. It's just, it's, it's a lot. And if you're talking for a while or you're just trying to manage it, people have a reaction to this because it's bigger. So it's more invasive in a space. You can't like do any stealth video if need be. Um, and I just, I find that holding this is too much, too much for vlogging. Interviews on a tripod, fine. Vlogging, no downside and this is the downside of a lot of SLRs and DSLRs is the flip screen where are you does not come all the way up right that's that's her limitation so if I am talking to the camera I can't see that I'm in focus on the viewing screen and I can't see what my background looks like nothing that's a downside I don't particularly like the idea of vlogging with something this big though. I find that that is a royal pain in the ass. In reality, if you are kind of running and gunning and like taking video on the street and like moving around and doing stuff, you are not going to be setting up a tripod like how I shot video and news. You're not going to set up lights. Uh, none of that. So you just need something that's terribly manageable on the fly. And that is why I bought this, which I have a love-hate relationship with. This is the new GoPro Hero Black. Part of my hate of this is that I was spoiled working in news in that we had very nice cameras on nice tripods 
with light gear and gels and so you could really shoot beautiful video and that's kind of what my expectations are of my work that it be beautiful consumer gear <clears throat> is made so that everyone can use it without knowing all the ins and outs of video production and that's fine but it's just the quality downgrades and then there's there's just a lot of other stuff that you have to get to support basic function whereas in professional gear it's like all in the camera the camera records the audio the camera you can have like a light up here so there's a million and one videos about people that set GoPros up for vlogging you still have the issue of not being able to see yourself and know that you're in the shot because the screen is here it doesn't move at all I will say that while I did screw it up a few times initially, you just kind of learn where you need to hold it so that you're in frame. Plus, it's a wide angle lens, so chances are you're going to get yourself in the shot. But the Hero 7, the reason that I got this for vlogging is because it has a new stabilizing feature. A lot of you have asked me what kind of um, gimbal or stabilizing gear I use for this. I don't because the technology on this one has developed to the point that it almost looks like it's on a gimbal, but it's not. And I try to minimize how much gear I'm carrying on my back every day. So this I just hold with the simple little tripod the monopod that comes with it you can get all kinds of stupid accessories for gopros they're totally not necessary um and then the cage this is an aluminum cage and it is not necessary for the hero 7 to be waterproof you can take it out of the cage and throw it in the water the video i shot of me jumping into the natural spring that was shot on this Crystal clear, the quality of video is top notch. It is very stable. My biggest gripe with GoPro. And I can't really fault them for this because GoPro did not design this camera or any GoPro to be a vlogging camera. So you're using it for its unintended purpose. But you have to get all this extra shit to get this to record audio. Right, and it's all expensive and it all has to be GoPro brand. You have to get the audio adapter, this thing, this was 50 bucks. And then you can't just plug in any mic. No, that would be too easy. Yes, GoPro. Without going into a huge explanation, the prongs are either three or four on the end of a microphone. It makes all the difference in the world whether or not you are going to have audio recording. You have to get a certain kind of lavalier wireless mic to match up with the GoPro and the adapter. It you're going to screw it up five times before you even get remotely close. And then you got to get a windscreen so that when you're outside, you know, it's, it doesn't screw up your audio. But managing this on this is kind of a pain in the ass. I do also have a Rode mic, which uh, that's called the Dead Cat. It's like that fuzzy thing up here, right? Sorry, I'm trying to make this easy for both of us. Oh, I sweat my ass off in this Texas heat. Um, it's a mic that attaches up here and it doesn't require you to run this up your shirt, but you still need the adapter and then you still got to mount this. Up. It's, uh, the short story is this is a pain in the ass if you're going to record audio. Pain in the ass. But for run and gun, this is not intrusive. I can pretty much hold this anywhere and people don't get freaked out. It just kind of blends in and people are used to seeing a GoPro. If you've got a big ass DSLR, they're gonna try to get out of your shot. This is just kind of normalized. So for on the fly vlogging, I do like this a lot. And when I take the time to set up this contraption, I have good audio. If I get hired to do voiceover work, which I've done some of on the road because I have such a sexy voice. I have a Zoom recorder for that. I'll put links to all this stuff below so that y'all don't have to go hunting for it. But a Zoom recorder is a professional audio recorder. I think it was about $200. It has its own mic. It's very high quality. Um, and it's just a box 
that you basically talk into. It's, it's way more um, professional than that, but I'm just trying to give you the idea. Um, and so if you really need precise audio and you want to know that your levels are right and you want to make sure that you're not missing the audio, something like that, but you can't really carry that around with you. Um, I was going to bring my light kit, my like whole news lady light kit because I just think it's important to light things correctly. There is no way in hell I'd have room for that or time for that in the van. You are not setting up tripods and lights. Absolutely not. You just don't have time. I've talked to you about this before. This is the thing that in my early videos created that demonic looking or angelic looking depending on how you feel about me. Um, halo in my eyes. It's called a ring light. It comes in three different brightness levels and you can pretty much clip it to almost anywhere this not so much uh, and light your face up and the ring light is used by those really pretty uh, war paint artists the makeup bloggers because it lights every corner of your face so you don't have shadows you can also put this right on your cell phone clip it right there and it'll light you up for the obligatory selfie while you're traveling. So I have just ordered, that. that's the basics, right? And again, I'll put links to everything below. Um, but the tripod thing has been a pain in the ass because GoPros, tripods, and then switching to the still camera, and da, 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 da. So I just bought some new stuff that I should be picking up in a couple days when I'm at my friend's house. Uh, in another city in Texas, but I will say, and this is the second or third one I've had, I've had a couple different versions of these, these Gorilla Pods. If you're noticing a, that a leg is missing, it's because every single one I've owned, the leg has twisted off. And they've all broken, every single one of them. And I mean, I'm intense, but I'm not like that strong and violent. So that shouldn't be happening. So I'm not buying these anymore. I bought one that's a solid, um, flexible metal. I'll have to explain it later and I'll update this video when I have that. Uh, but for all the gear that I have, you know, you have to have a lot of batteries and that is kind of the other thing when you're planning your power needs. Shut up, I don't wanna hear about solar. <laughs> um, you're gonna have to constantly be charging batteries. These are super duper expensive. These are for the still camera. And then GoPro batteries suck. They drain outrageously fast. And I think that's because they're making them such high resolution that you're just asking a lot of the device. Um, but I blow through batteries every night. I charge up every single one of my batteries and I carry this this treasure trove of batteries that I will probably blow through at the end of the day and then have to recharge them all night long. Um, and so just the last thing that I'll say about picking out your gear for vlogging or still photography is that people have an obsession about megapixels. And, and they always, when they roll out new versions of cameras, it's always about how many megapixels. And I want to say my first camera ever got three megapixels, and, like, that was cool. And, like, that one, the Sony, I think that one has 32. But it's, like, every, every time they roll them out, it's just more and more and more. Just keep this in mind before you go just throw money away for an insane amount of megapixels. Megapixels only matter if you're gonna blow something up. So if I know, if someone hires me to shoot a landscape photo for their business, um, I appreciate those megapixels because we're gonna, we're gonna blow that bitch up to hang on someone's office, so I need that. But the strict majority of people are taking photos and putting them on social media. So you do not need all those megapixels. You know, you want to be asking um, questions just... It, it's hard to even advise that because everyone takes photos for different reasons. But please don't get obsessed with how many megapixels. You know, think about what you're gonna use it for and how you're gonna use it. If you'd like the Wi-Fi connectivity, then spring for that. But 
the cameras always come out with these insane features and most of them you will not use because at the end of the day, the most important thing is understanding how that camera works in manual so that you can give that camera its highest functionality and use the features and give, you know, use it for how it was meant to be used um, to take beautiful photos and then edit them so that you bring out the very best in that photo. If you are just going to be point and shooting and then throwing them on Instagram, uh, then you probably don't need to spend $1,200 and get the Rhino Zit Safari lens. It's just, it's just not necessary. Let the idiot next to you take that photo and spend $3,000 and tell him to email it to you. Like, money saved. Um, I think that is it for what I vlog and edit with. Um, just if you're going to be on the road and you're in a van, think compact and keep it simple because you don't have the storage and you will constantly be worried about your camera bag getting stolen um, or your gear getting too hot in the van. And it's just, uh, it's not worth it for the cost. So I hope that helped at all. If you have any other questions, or really, uh, if you have any other questions about van life and stuff like that, please put that in the comment section. Um, because I can only talk so much about Lay Shitter, right? <laughs> like, the, I, otherwise, I'm changing the name of this channel to Glitter, Glitter Shitter, the Glitter Shitter channel. <laughs> We'll make t-shirts. It'll be amazing. Um, but, all right, I got to get back outside because I cannot sit in this hot car. You do not leave children and reporters and gingers in hot cars. We all melt. Okay, I'll see y'all later.